Okay. It's going. It's rolling. Uh -oh. Okay. It's just being slow on my end, apparently. Okay. Welcome, everybody. It is Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much for joining us here at Office Hours. We're very excited about our conversation because one of our co-hosts is a co-presenter today. I am Heather Cox, the Modern Workplace Specialist. With me today are my fabulous co-hosts. Hey, everybody. Stephanie Stevens. Hello, I'm Victoria Dean. Hey, I'm Garrett. And we are going to turn it over to Victoria and Andres. They're going to be presenting. Um, Derek, I saw that a hand went up. I'm hoping it's a team's voice question and uh, that Victoria and Andres can get to it at some point during the presentation. So take it away, friends. All right, thank you very much, Heather. Um, so if I'm using PowerPoint Live, so if you see this, I know you see 50 slides. I will not be covering 50 slides today. Um, I, I want to kind of go over some of the, the devices that you can use with Teams Voice. I was kind of looking at the chat last week and that seemed to come up a lot. Um, so I have Andreas here as well, and I should probably introduce myself. I see you guys every week, so I assume you know me. But hi, I'm Victoria Dean. I'm a Teams tech specialist. Um, I help support the Southeast and South Atlantic regions. And Andreas, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. So my name is Andres Alandano. I'm a Teams, I'm a senior Teams technical specialist here for education covering the Northeast as well as the Mid-Atlantic. All right, awesome. So uh, we want to keep this conversational. Uh, Andres has a lot of background in this space, and I've had the opportunity to learn a lot from him. So I'm first going to just cover the devices, the different use cases for using these devices with Teams Voice. Um, he's going to touch a bit on the device management aspect, but I want to leave a little bit more time at the end for you all to just kind of spitfire questions about Teams Voice, um, these devices, et cetera. So let's jump right in. So when we're looking at uh, these devices, people are considering them for two main kind of different reasons, right? You're thinking about individual workspaces, whether that's in the office, at home, or some hybrid of the two, and then group workspaces. So thinking about your conference rooms or classrooms, lecture halls, um, things of that nature. So uh, when we look at these two use cases, and hopefully my slides actually advance, um, we get two different types of devices um, that we're looking at that have a breadth of devices within each one of those, right? So, uh, you know, I think I was on a call earlier. I'm now mixing up all of my calls, but talking about the different peripheral devices, um, of course, the big question that a lot of you are always asking is, should we go with a soft phone client, right? Using your uh, PC or your mobile device versus should we have desktop phones, right? Um, and I know that that question, there's really no kind of catch all with that. We can't say definitively use your soft, you know, use a soft phone client. Um, usually for a lot of the customers we talk to, it comes down to cost and also not trying to ruffle too many feathers, right? So, um, of course, the cheapest option is to use a soft phone client. Um, you'll get to see a few screenshots of what the Teams application looks like on your mobile device. Um, it is really, really nice. It's really great. Um, I know that sometimes what I hear is that some customers, they're, the people that they support, right, faculty and staff members, maybe feel uncomfortable having work um, things on their personal devices, um, so they don't want to be responsible for that, and that's understandable as well. Um, usually, a lot of kind of superintendents um, or deans of colleges, things like that, kind of request that they have that desktop phone. So it's really a personal choice, but you'll get to see a lot of the different devices we have there. Um, shared spaces, the, the topic of today is not necessarily Microsoft Teams rooms, um, but um, you know, you got Surface Hub, you got Microsoft Teams room, large screen displays. So those are kind of shared devices, which won't be the focus of today. And um, giving some examples of these. So these are all of our device partners. Um, we lean heavily on our partners. Microsoft does not make any Teams phones, right? We we are not getting into that space right now as an as an OEM that makes these devices. Um, but we help, you know, our engineers make the software that goes on these devices. So they're either going to be 
a lot of these are Android based. Uh, when you talk about the Microsoft Teams rooms, you have some Windows 10 devices as well. Um, with that Android based device, which Andres will kind of touch on a little bit at the uh, towards the end of this, but there is um, kind of a difference you have to deal with from a device management perspective, right? A lot of you guys, if you're using Intune or used to doing it for a Windows 10 device, it might not actually have a policy in place for Android based phones. Um, but here's kind of a lot of the peripheral devices. Of course, you're looking at a lot of these pucks, which is what a lot of people call them now. These speaker pucks that, you know, are speakers and mics as well, you know, headsets, webcams, um, and then a lot of these, you know, traditional desktop phones. These Microsoft Teams displays, um, a lot of education customers don't really find a space that they fit into. They are really cool um, to use. And so, you know, I'll touch on them. Um, and I think that they're just relatively new. And so it's kind of weird for people. It's like, okay, is this technically kind of like a soft client? Because I don't have anything to pick up and put to my ear. Um, but, but they're pretty neat if you find a use case in your organization. So digging a little bit more into the phones, it, it really is a tiered approach. Um, again, trying to be agnostic of what device partner you choose to use. It's like buying a car, right? No one can say that this is the best car for everyone to buy because it depends on what you know the situation is at, at your organization. Um, but these phones right here, this audio codes and Yealink phone, um, usually people might use this in like a common area use case. So still a native Teams device, but might not have all of the fancy, you know, touchscreen bells and whistles as some of the other devices have. Um, and you don't need that, right? Because it's not supposed to be connected to a particular user. Someone might use that phone one time and never use it again. So maybe not worth spending, you know, as much as you can on it. Um, these here would kind of be maybe your teachers, faculty, staff members, very nice phones, do what they needed to do, nice large display for you to see everything. Um, but still, you know, a step down from, from these right here. So these right here, a lot of times people might look at for, again, superintendents, deans of universities, what have you, that, you know, these are still really nice devices here. Um, but usually with that top of the line, maybe you get a camera display in there. Maybe you have some video functionality right there. Um, you know, more Bluetooth capability, things like that. Again, you can decide internally whether or not, you know, that is needed. It is nice to have. And, you know, of course, your leadership is always going to want the best of, of what's out there on the market. Um, these to the right, again, shared spaces, the, these are what you're looking at for uh, a conference room scenario, which kind of has everything um, built into one right there. And I'm going to pause before going on to kind of what some of the UI looks like and see, um, Andreas, if you have anything you want to add or if there are any questions at this time. All right, I'll keep trucking along. So we all know Teams is, you know, you know, not just for calling, right, or not just for having meetings, but it's calling, collaboration, you have voicemail capability, and we still, of course, have meetings. Um, so here with this people experience, I just want to show kind of what, you know, different screenshots look like, you know, for people that haven't used Teams Voice. It is really neat, right? It's it's better than just having a traditional phone. You get all of the nice UI user experience as well that you're used to if you're using Teams today. Uh, being able to see favorites, you know, kind of speed dial functionality, um, call by name functionality, um, Cortana, which not a lot of people usually use, which kind of makes me want to have a Cortana session because when I set through one, I'm like, you know what, I should probably use it more. But you can use Cortana to dial someone's phone number um, in a shared space scenario um, or even on your own. So um, that is really nice use case there. When we think about meetings, you also looking at this is going to look similar to what you might have um, if you're using the Teams mobile application on your phone right now, being able to see the calendaring, you know, who's going to participate in the, the call, things like that. So um, quite a bit of information there. 
and showing these kind of again in the mobile application and then what it would look like in a conference room scenario. And then last but not least, everyone, this question comes up a lot. Can you do voicemail? Yes, you can. And it also includes uh, transcription, which is really nice. Um, so again, look and feel of the different things. Um, and this kind of touches a little bit on the licensing aspect as well. Uh, when you're looking at, you know, maybe a meeting room, you can obviously see the different meetings that are scheduled for that room. When we think about meeting rooms, they actually have their own credentials and login. So you would actually invite those rooms to be a part of your meeting. Therefore, it has its own calendar that it's keeping track of, and it automatically accepts calendar invites. Um, with the phone system license, this is kind of your personal user account. Again, reiterating what you get to see here. Names, anyone that's a part of your tenant, your Azure Active Directory, you'll get to kind of see their information. Common area phones. A lot of people try and use this SKU because it is significantly cheaper than calling plans or whatever else. Um, and then they get the phone and they apply it and then they're like, I can't do all of the things I want to do, right? You can't add it to a call queue auto attendant. Um, I can't do redial. Um, and this obviously looks a little bit more just black and white compared to these other UIs. So be careful in how you're using that SKU because it literally is just to dial a number and be used by a lot of different people. Um, couple of features here to wrap up. There is kind of hot desking feature. These are some things that we're rolling out, um, you know, where maybe it's not your phone, but again, you know, you're using that space for now, especially thinking about how we're doing things at Microsoft, a lot of shared space scenarios. Um, a lot of people have asked about being able to make emergency calls, um, but since a lot of these personal devices usually allow or require you to be logged in, um, how can we make a call, you know, in emergency? Can we do this from a lock screen? That's another um, roadmap item for us. And then this again kind of goes back to the team's displays. Don't want to spend too much time there, but I will show you kind of a general scenario, you can actually connect your Teams display to your desktop uh, or to your PC, um, and you can have your PC and your Teams display both connected to one headset, right? So a lot of these Teams enabled headsets can actually connect to multiple devices at one time. Uh, but notice from this picture here, um, they're actually joined into one meeting and sharing from their PC, but being able to see all of the participants here. So if you only have you know, a one screen device scenario, you don't have an external monitor to connect to. Um, this actually comes in handy quite a bit. OK, um, I'm going to skip on. I didn't realize there was so much to say about these things. Um, again, this is a brief touch on licensing, slightly different licenses for slightly different use cases. Um, when we think about peripheral devices, I get a question a lot. Does it matter that we have a Teams um, certified device, right? Yes and no, right? Depends on what you want to have. If you want to make sure everything stays up to date, um, you want to make sure that you have the right, you know, integration within Teams, things of that nature. You know, you want to make sure the OEM has been vetted by Microsoft, then yes, it would be important. Um, here are kind of some of the things that you lose out on when you don't necessarily have a um, team certified device um, that you're you're working with, right? You don't get that Teams easy button to uh, connect to, may or may not have a USB dongle. Um, you know, quality is variable. It, it depends, right? So those are some of the things you would want to consider. Um, some people ask about, I, I know the question came up last time about um, in user training, in which Andres might touch on a little bit here, but what's nice about these devices that are Teams enabled is you will get a prompt, your end users will get a prompt that actually walks them through, hey, here are the different features and capabilities that you can use with this device, right? So a, a bit of end user training kind of built in there. Um, these are kind of those, you know, Teams easy buttons that I'm, you know, was referring to earlier to kind of look out for, for you to know if you get a device, someone just randomly hands it to you, you didn't have a time to do adequate research on it, 
quick way of knowing whether or not it is kind of a team certified device um, is usually you're going to have that button that's going to allow you to join any meeting that you currently have on your calendar. At that time, you press that button and you'll automatically be able to join. Um, that being said, kind of wrapping up this se section, here's kind of a website that you can go to if you want to look at um, a lot of different devices that we have. Again, we have lots of different OEMs out there. Um, if you are connected, you know, to a person that, you know, manages your account, connect with them if you need to have a warm introduction to any OEM that you're interested in, or even if you just want insight on where should we start, where should we go, um, happy to help with that. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Andreas to just kind of get to the device management part of the conversation for when you guys are actually rolling these phones out. Yeah, definitely. I um, appreciate that. So I wanted to showcase something um, we, before we kind of do that. Um, one thing that we do have now available with Teams is the fact that you can share screen directly from Teams. So you'll see if this is my phone now so everybody can see that and I'm sharing directly from my phone. So same thing. <laughs> it's all directly from there. Um, one of the things that I wanted to showcase here was the fact that the mobile experience that I have on my laptop is the same as my um, as my desktop. So and, and the same thing that you'll have on your desk phone and all of this can be managed. So again, beforehand, right? I have my favorites here, speed dial that I've set. Um, we can also set up um, history as well as take a look at my voicemail from here. So earlier, I think I did. Yep. Uh, I did a Spanish voicemail and I left it there for demo purposes. Um, it'll actually do transcription as well as translating. So it'll do it from Spanish to English and it'll do multiple languages for that. So when the email gets deposited to my exchange online, it'll actually do the original text and voice and then it'll do then the transcription and translation to um, What's it called to the user's original language? So if I'm um, like if my native language is Spanish and that's what the language is set on my office, and I'm getting a call in English, it'll translate the languages to Spanish and it'll do that for you in real time. Okay. Yeah. So uh, great question. So how does this view differ from the new operator Connect? So essentially, instead of you having to rely on using the Teams application to get a call, um, it'll be on your team, um, basically on your mobile um, call button. So instead of having to go to Teams, right, and then go to get your call, it'll just be your default calling, and that'll be your number associated to that. So that's the difference between the operator Connect Mobile and then Teams. Uh, let's you see. You want me to pull that deck back up, Andres? I don't know. I was just going to okay. switch okay. now to doing a demo. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to switch um, to my laptop again, using a lot of devices here. So I showed you, I don't know if you realize that, and I, I should have kind of talked about it a little bit, was that Let's see, where is that page? There it is. Okay, so can you guys see my screen? The Android enrollment here? Not yet. It might still be loading. Okay, I think it did not share. Perfect. <laughs> Anyways, um, what I was sharing lastly on my phone was that I had a folder that said work apps and it said Microsoft. Uh, that's something that you can actually repeat populate with Android for work, right? So a lot of a lot of pushback that I keep hearing from our customers is like, well, I don't want the university, or I don't want the school taking a look at my personal information and within my personal device. And so something that Google did, which is actually pretty slick, um, at the beginning it was a little bit confusing and a little bit awkward, but once you get used to it and somebody coming in new to it, it makes a lot of sense, is the fact that they compartmentalized all the work applications and the work profile into a separate section of the phone. So it's too segregated. So think about um, from a Windows perspective, when you're doing a, 
uh, what's it called, a disk partition, right? So you can have two separate OSs. So essentially that's what Google did with Android. So you're compartmentalizing the work profile and the work storage separate from your personal. So a lot of times it makes sense for when, uh, from a device management and from just overall collaborative standpoint that in security, right, you don't want to necessarily get away from protecting your profiles and protecting your data. So a lot of times it makes it a little bit difficult to um, copy and paste stuff from like one application in your personal profile from your work profile, but they do it with purpose. And so one of the advantages that you have with that is the fact that it's compartmentalized and it gets rid of that notion that, you know, your your company or your school or um, the university is looking into your personal profile, which it won't. Um, even prior to that, it didn't, but they just kind of made it very obvious now by separating the two profiles. Um, one of the key uh, recommendations when setting up a Teams phone device, and now I'm jumping into actually deploying a Teams desktop phone, is you, you can get a little bit proactive, right? So a lot of times what I usually see is a lot of customers that have Intune deployed already, they might have Android locked down or at least Android for personal devices. And so when you get a Teams phone device, um, a Teams native phone, all of those are running Android. They're either running Android 8.1 or Android 9. And so when you register your profile into those devices, you actually end up registering them as personal devices. So what ends up happening now is the fact that if you have Android for personal use locked down, those phones will fail. And I ran that, I ran across that in several customers. So you have to set up your Google, um, manage Google Play as well as set up those devices, right? Go ahead and add devices into, um, add them into your, let's see. Right, so you would have to add them here into your devices. And what's going to happen is that when you're adding these devices into, um, and I, I would have to set it up entirely here, but I haven't done so. When you set it up, you'll have to add the MAC address or um, into Intune so that the device is now recognized by Intune as a corporate own device. It's a fully managed device now, so that way you don't run into that error during enrollment. So that's something that I usually come across as like a best practice, right? Uh, second thing is that you can also do a lot of this stuff now from a profiles configuration right within the Teams Admin Center. So we've kind of broken down the devices aspect now from a user phone to a common area phone to a conference phone. So that way you can create profiles according to each one of them. So maybe from a user perspective, um, like a classroom phone or a common area phone, more specifically, a common area phone, it might be a classroom phone. Uh, you may not necessarily want to have um, be completely open. You want to have a locking mechanism, right? So it'll be a pin, it times out after 30 seconds, right? Uh, you can also do some device settings as well. Screen savers, right? Backlight timeout, you can do high display, silent mode, right? You can do office hours as well. Um, you know, for classroom settings, like if you don't want to call, you don't want calls to come in all the time through certain hours, et cetera, right? So essentially you can do things like that and set up profiles from within your team's admin center. And so now you can start to apply these policies directly into devices that are enrolled. Now I should have two devices here, but I don't know why they're not there. Um, but essentially another way to do that is to add scope tags, right? So again, uh, you can add scope tags to say uh, this might be a classroom phone or this might be an office phone or a user phone, right? And essentially all you're doing is adding tags that allow you to filter through as well as be able to um, make the process of assigning policies a little bit easier. Now, um, so that's on the desk phone side. Again, we're agnostic to the OEM that you're using. doesn't matter which phone you are. Uh, you'll also be able to upgrade policies and, and uh, firmware directly from Teams Admin Center. So once your phones show up, you can basically create a policy to auto um, auto update. And so once the phone is registered for the first time, give it a couple hours, the phone will then basically replicate within the tenant. It'll show up which firmware version it's on 
It'll also check to see if there's an update. It'll say that, yes, you have an update due. It'll then download the, the update on the phone and then up, update it automatically. So um, you can completely do that as well as set up schedules to when you want the updates to run. All right. Now we have two things here for Teams Rooms. Now we have Teams Rooms for Android and then Teams Rooms for uh, Windows. Now Teams are from Windows, that used to be what we call the Microsoft Teams Rooms, right? Uh, the Teams Rooms for Android, that actually used to be what we used to call collaborative bars or collaboration bars. We just rebranded it to kind of have a single unified name because they are the same, right? They have the same purpose and they kind of work the same. It's just the operating system was different, right? So Teams Rooms for Windows, Think of those for devices for like your larger rooms, the ones that you need to add on additional peripherals. So if you needed to add on additional cameras, microphone speakers, right? The much larger conference rooms, like if you needed a panel to control all of that, um, that's what you would use the Windows. And it's actually the one that's most manageable because it is running a Windows-based OS. Um, you'll be able to manage everything through um, Intune for enrollment. And we're actually doing a little bit more on this to be more specific for uh, Microsoft Teams rooms for Windows. So we are going to be building more on this um, on the Intune side to be able to allow for more streamline as well as um, automation inside of that. So as you can see here, I already have a conference room. Uh, I'm using a Yale link. I think it's MVC 60, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can start to see like I, um, you know, tells me this health status, manufacturer, what model it is device name, right? Um, and then I can dive in into this as well as it tells me what my peripherals are for this device. So I do have a room camera, the UVC84. I have an echo canceling speaker. This is actually the smart speaker, uh, the one that actually does live transcription in real time. Uh, also echo canceling speaker and then a display, right? So it tells me what my, all the peripherals are connected to my uh, MTR, I can see my device logs from here as well. So if I need to do some troubleshooting, I can do that. Um, any refresh, if I needed to restart the device from here, I can do that as well. So from a health perspective, it actually tells me everything that's connected. So this is one of the critical points of MTRs, is that you're actually able to get some real-time um, status updates on your devices. So it makes um, AV tech's um, jobs a little bit easier. So when you're starting to get issues, right, you're in the middle of a presentation or about to do a lecture and all of a sudden, like the, <laughs> I've seen this happen so many times where like the, like the projector's not working, right? Uh, you'll be able to take a look at it really quickly and say, okay, like it's actually showing me my display here and it's showing that it's not, maybe it'll show that it's not connected. And now you know, oh, okay, let me go take a look at the HDMI or take a look at the display. Maybe it's turned off. Maybe it's not connected to the power. Maybe the HDMI cable broke, um, right? You want to take a look at. So it gives you a little bit more insights as to how you can um, basically uh, troubleshooting for troubleshooting purposes. It also tells me like the admin or like the team's agent, right? And team's app and the operating system as well. So it's using Windows 10 for this specifically. Now, lastly, uh, it'll, so again, details, username. So again, these are MTR profiles. So it's a username dedicated to the MTR. So you're not using a resource account or anything like that. Well, you are, but it's more like a user account in reality. It also tells me the IP address, the internal IP address as well. Um, I can also take a look at the history, right? Participants, activity, and any calls. Um, and the history of the diagnostics and stuff like that. Yeah, I know we're short on time, so that's all I could show, but any questions? There was one question in the chat that I wasn't really able to answer, uh, Andres, from, from Alan. Um, okay about uh, whether or not the, if we think the Android-based phone devices will move to the life cycle supported by Android 11, 12 or higher, uh, where there is OS upgrade support for four or five years. Yeah, that's actually gonna be um, depending on Google. So basically a lot of these OEMs are starting to get into the life cycle management of the lowest, uh, the lowest OS supportable, just because it's, a lot of these devices take years to design, right? When, when it comes from a life cycle. Um, and I talked to EA Link and Audio Codes about this. 
Um, a few of the OEMs are already thinking about putting Android 10 or 11 on these devices. Um, and the only reason for that is because they're looking at stability. You know, one of the main things that you th think about from a desk phone is that you want stability on that phone, not like a Teams client where, you know, let's face it, like it, it could be a little bit buggy and might have some complications from time to time and very rare occasions. But you don't want that from a desk phone. You want that expectation that when you pick up that handset, you're going to get dial tone. And so that's the reality of a lot of these desk phones is that they're going to be uh, a few OSs behind just simply because they want that stability as well as that um, basically that ability to predict like how it's going to behave from the years of experience of that OS being released. So, yeah. Awesome. So I know this this went longer than we expected, but if anyone has further questions or th there needs to be a part two or topics we didn't cover that you wish we would have covered, please put it in the chat. I do check it. Um, and that is it from us. Thank you. Yeah, I think we do have something scheduled for for next week, Steve Lane. Um, I'll double check that we do have it already. I believe we do have something on the 24th. Um, but as Victoria said, we control the agenda, you control the agenda. So if there are topics that matter to you, let us know because that's what, you know, we, we do go back to our whiteboard to make sure that we're bringing up things that are important to you. So that way it's relevant to what you want to learn about. So please drop that in there. We we can make sure that these topics are are what you need. Um, Steve's bringing it up in the next staff meeting. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm stopping the recording. Have a fabulous Thursday.